MX TV is proudly brought to you by Peter Stevens Motorcycles, QBE Insurance, Motorcycle Insurance Specialists, Fox, and Honda, the power of dreams. Welcome to MX TV. This week we're coming to you from the cooler motocross track here in sunny Queensland for the last round of the Rockstar Energy Drink MX Nationals. On tonight's show, obviously, we're going to bring you all the racing action here from Coolum. We'll catch up with the Pro Open and the Pro Light winners, and we've got a very special interview that you won't want to miss. Now, most of you already realise that it takes a massive effort to run an event like this. Just how many people, how many hours, and what goes into running one of these sorts of events? Well, we thought we'd take you behind the scenes to find out. Putting an event of this size on is, is a huge task. You know, we have, uh, we have about 13 staff that go to each event. You know, we work with uh, Motorcycle Australia, is one of our contractual partners now. They provide the media service. You know, we have uh, four guys on logistics just doing all the signings that you see behind us. That's, you know, basically three days' work. You know, the truck uh, leaves home, we've got all the timing equipment, we uh, put the timing system in, we've got to put all that data into the computer, uh, all the truck parking, we've got all the teams, the truck parking, signing the riders on. You know, it, it's a full-time job seven days a week for the full six, seven months of the year. It's an early start on the day of a race day. You have to get here early to sign on all the media, get all the identity forms signed, wristbands on, get vests done, all that sort of thing. Then races start with the first qualifying session. More media will probably pop up during the day. Run around with results, you know, grabbing quotes from the riders to put in the press releases at the end of the day. Then once race day is over, we take the results around to all of the teams, grab final quotes after the podium, then I start riding and I probably won't finish riding until about 10 or 11 o'clock at night and putting everything up on the websites as well. Predominantly, the club becomes the promoter, so every uh, dollar that's made uh, at the gate and the catering goes to the clubs, and that's how you see, especially here at Coolum, they've always had good crowds, they listen when we have a promoter's conference, they advertise and market it well. The facility here has to be in pristine condition before it starts. So many, many hours of work to get to this point before we fire a shot on Sunday morning. So yeah, so there's a hell of a lot of work done by very few people. Basically with motocross and motorcycling in general, um, there's a lack of broad coverage in mainstream media. And if we want the sport to continue to grow, we've got to change that. And as the governing body of motorcycle sport in the country, we've got to take a proactive role in improving that situation. And, you know, we've, we've started to get some pretty good coverage of motocross. It's just a question of improving that. And then hopefully, you know, we can sort of see the sport grow and become more mainstream and get the coverage that it actually deserves. For us, uh, the future is very bright. You know, the sport's very good. This particular track here at Coolum, you know, their tenure here is only another four years. Uh, we had a meeting this week with uh, some of the hitters in council 
and uh, if we can give them a, a you know a long-term contract for the championship, they'll go to state government and see if we can get a 10-year tenure here. So we'll work with the clubs that need some assistance to develop that. We'll develop hospitality and merchandising and other commercial uh, incomes for the teams and the privateers. Yeah, they've done a fantastic job all year, and particularly here at Coolum. And something that's a little bit different at Coolum is the soil. As you can see, it's a dark, sandy type soil that gets in absolutely everywhere. So in today's product review, we thought we'd show you something that's pretty handy in these sorts of conditions. Hi everyone, Factory Mac here. And this week for the first of our 08 product reviews, we're gonna take a look at the latest evolution in goggles from our good friends at Scott, the Voltage Pro Air. One of the new features on the Voltage Pro Air is the updated air management system via the Ram Air ventilation, forcing air into the goggle, keeping it nice and cool and anti-fog. Another updated feature of the Pro Air is the new no sweat face foam. Fantastic for you guys that get out there and sweat a lot. It'll be fantastic in absorbing all the sweat and keeping you nice and dry. The other one is it comes standard with a Pro Air nose guard, which is removable, and the lens and tear-offs are interchangeable with your old series Voltage goggles. Of course, the Voltage Pro Air maintains its silicon-lined strap, which makes it really grippy on your helmet, and also the clear anti-fog coated works Lex and lenses. All in all, I'd have to say this is another fantastic goggle from Scott. And at around 90 bucks, why wouldn't you rush out and get one? They're the latest and greatest goggles available on the market today. For more technical information on the new Voltage Pro Air, check out the website at www.cnr.com.au. We'll catch you next week. And remember, if it comes from Factory Matt, it's got to be good. It's Factory. Yeah, a great product review by Matty. And I tell you what, they're a great goggle as well. I'm going to see if I can snare these myself. Now, as you can hear, the bikes have already started. So after the break, we're going to have a look at the 2008 Rockstar Energy Nationals in review. So don't go anywhere. faster fuel injected CRF 450R. First across the line on the 09 CRF 250R and CRF 150R. Be race ready with your free toolbox. How much fun can you have on a Honda? This much fun. Ride out on your new Honda Fun Bike and set up camp with a free fun pack. Plus, there's a bonus $400 cashback on the CRF 50 and no application fee on Honda Finance. Hurry, because when they're gone, they're gone. MXTV is proudly supported by GT Bicycles, Dunlop, Alpine Stars, Pro Circuit, Motul, Scott Goggles, and Suzuki. Well, the 2008 Rockstar Energy MX Nationals has been run and won. And we said we'd go through the 2008 series with you. And joining me now is Andy Wigan from ADB. Andy, thanks for coming into MXTV and uh, Hello, talking about the series, mate. Let's start off with the uh, Pro Lights. A lot of anticipation. There's a lot of young guns that have just come through the series that we thought would do well. But it sort of turned out a bit of a four-man race, really, didn't it? It did a bit. It was like I think it was with the, you know, with the junior classes. It's uh, or the younger classes. Yeah. Uh, it's the guys that sort of can stick it out. You know, there's a lot of the young boys who are fast. Last yes. year, I think you saw 10 or 11 guys on the podium. This year, probably about the same. You know, but it really came down to six-man race. And after Mossy and uh, Cody Mack were out early season, I think those guys sort of suddenly stepped up and said to themselves, you know, we can we can win this thing. So it was, you know, great to see them, and it was a real, uh, a real refreshing year, I guess, to see those guys really sort of step up and, and take the bull by the horns. It certainly was, and as you said. There was a lot of teams that were out there at the moment that are new teams and of course we didn't know the package that they were going to bring and of course Cade Mazak going back to the uh, Pro Lights, it was fantastic to watch. Yeah, you know, and he had nothing to lose coming out here today. He had 12 points down the series, you know, and uh, he that's couldn't it. lose third place. Uh, so the boys were just sort of saying, you know, giving him the old rope and that's all you got to do, you know. And uh, But look, he was a little bit off the pace in the first one and, uh, you know, Adam Monia, the two Kawasaki boys, you know, full credit to those guys. Uh, Lukey George, you know, the guy signed on for zero dollars, you know, so I, I 
think it's probably the first time in the history of the sport where a guy signed on for zero dollars and taken away a championship. But full marks the kid. He's, uh, he's, he's a young fellow who's come out of the bush. And you, you saw how proud his dad was yeah. today with tears streaming down. And uh, and I, I did notice with Luke, he, you could see when he was, and I, I did question him about his fitness and, and how it had been. And he's really come through and matured from race one to now. He's, he's a different kid, isn't he? He is. You know, he's a great kid. And what you've got to love about him is his honesty. You know, he's the yes. first one to sort of look at a, at a media guy and say, oh, you know, I don't really know how to talk to the media. And, and that's what's sort of really nice about the guy is there's, uh, you know, there's no bullshit to him. And it's uh, very impressive to see what, what he's done as an 18-year-old kid. Can't wait till next year with him either. I'm sure he's going to defend that. That's right. Play. And then, you know, there's a mil under 19 guys who are going to step up. Yes. So there's, uh, there's incredible depth in the class. And I think it's, you know, probably some of the most exciting racing in the, in the whole Nationals. Now, of course, moving to the Pro Opens now, a big class. We had a lot of people that are new coming back. Daniel Reardon gone. Made it open, didn't it? Really did. It did, but you know, you got to realistically in the open class, it's not easy to hang on to 50 whatever horsepower yeah, they're getting yeah. out of these things now. So, uh, you know, realistically, there's sort of four guys that were, were likely to take the championship uh, on the way in. Obviously, Craig Anderson, you know, multi multi time winner. Boydy, who'd obviously been on the charge and really just needed an injury free season to, to sort of show what he's got. Jay Marmon, who I think's probably had a determination like, you know, nobody's ever seen before. And then, of course, Daryl Hurley, who's a great sparring partner for Ando over the years and uh, yeah. you know, provides that Kiwi content in the mix. So, um, with the Kings gone, there was only those four guys who were going to take it out. So, yeah. ultimately, it came down to battle between them. And it really was a battle all year round. You know, the three of them were changing positions. Of course, Jay missed the consistency again, like Luke. Every round, he was on the podium. Jay's is the kind of guy, very much like his new team manager, never the guy to get a whole shot, you know, but always the guy to show the guts and determination and, and to come to on the end. And I think that's why he's uh, there's a very good combination between you know the, the CDR team, Craig Dack and, and Jay. He's another Craig Dack, you know, 20 years on. <laughs> Andy, winners are grinners, and we caught up with the winners earlier today. The Pro Open 2008 Rockstar Energy Drink National Champion is none other than Jay Marmont. Jay, congratulations and well done, mate. Yeah, thanks a lot. Wow. Great feeling, you know, having that number one played. Uh, me and Boyd, had a good race in that last one. Uh, but yeah, it would have been good to top off a win, but, you know, I've got this bad boy on here, so that's all I come here for. And I, I really can't believe it's your first open one. It's, you've been around for so long, you've won so much. A testament to you to win this one. Yeah, no, it's the first one, you know, it means so much. Emotional day for me, family, team, all the fans. It's, it's no, it's good, you know, just going out there and um, plotted off, started in third of the series, worked my way up, and um, ended up topping off at the last round. So it was a good way to do it. Now, your mum and dad, mate, you must have aged them about ten years at the first moto coming down on the first quarter. Yeah, for sure, buddy. Aged me, you know, my gut I had gut aches all day, and it's just the nerves got to me a little bit. But um, crashed with a few guys out there, didn't get the best to start, but. Um, come through you know once I've seen on the pit board that's where I had to finish it was um yeah that's got it well done who have you got to thank number one my family um they supported me last year with um through the tough times and they're here through the good times so the other ones are uh, my trainer Scotty's been unreal obviously the team CDR Rockstar Yamaha um they got me my first pro open championship so it's uh I've got to thank them a lot too thanks a lot all right well we're with the 2008 Pro Lights champion, of course, it's Luke George. Luke, well done, mate. Great championship win, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. I um, just can't give it, up, give it up enough for the team. They've just been um, great, and I've, I've done it hard the last couple of years, and I finally got a factory ride, and um, I showed them what I can do, and it's just so good to get it out and um, let everyone know what I've got in me. Tell the viewers out there what was going through your mind coming into this last round. Were you very nervous? Oh, yeah, the last um, two weeks since Newry, it's been seven points a gap on Monia. He's been riding real good. And um, yeah, I haven't been able to sleep the two weeks. Last night I woke up at five o'clock in the morning. I just wanted to get out here. And um, yeah, it's just been so good. And I'm so happy to get this number one play. Who have you got to thank out there, Luke? Oh, I've got to give it up for my mechanic, Glenn, my trainer, Andy Cunningham. Brett Whale, the uh, manager of the team, is um, a great guy. And um, yeah, pretty much it's, uh, I think it's the best team in Australia. Well, Andy, thank you very much for joining us and going through the 2008 Rockstar Energy MX Nationals, mate. It's uh, been fantastic, fantastic talking to you. Yeah, pleasure, Brendan. Really looking forward to it. A great season. Very much looking forward to the Super X coming up now. A couple of months, a really good opportunity for the sport, I think. Yeah, you're not wrong at all. You're not wrong. And don't forget, keep your eye out for ADB. It's the best dirt bike bag out there, no doubt, Andy. Thanks, mate. <laughs> and, guys, we've got plenty more right after the break. The Green Machine has a new team on Elizabeth Street, the new Peter Stevens City Store, with a complete range of Kawasaki road, trail and sports bikes, plus a crew of dedicated Kawasaki staff on hand to help you. 
Isn't it time you made the trip into Peter Stevens Kawasaki? You know what to do. Do it quick. Give them a call or check out the website at www.peterstevens.com.au. And remember, normal people go shopping, bike people go to Peter Stevens. Welcome back to MXTV. Well, as you can see, I've got away from the track and I'm joined now by one of New Zealand's best motocross riders to come out of that country. Although he's won an Australian championship and some of us even call him an Australian. Of course, it's Daryl Hurley. Daryl, the big news, mate, you've retired. Tell us all about it. Yeah, thanks uh, for having me. And uh, I just uh, decided that, you know, I couldn't commit to the Australian season like I could when I first started over here. And, you know, I've got uh, some things going on at home now that have uh, sort of affected uh, the amount of effort that I can put in. And obviously, uh, I just uh, decided, you know, time's coming. You're wrapping up your riding career. Tell us a little bit about that riding career and some of the highs that you had through it. Yeah, there's been many. Obviously, when I first started here in 97, I came as a privateer. Craig Dack picked me up and uh, the, you know through that year and took my bike to the races for me. Then he actually gave me a ride the year after. And basically Craig got my career going. And I rode for him for like four years yep. um, before switching to Suzuki. And I've uh, ridden for Suzuki Australia and Jay Foreman's team basically since then. So I've ridden for them for eight years now. And of course you did the stint over in America as well? I did the stint in America where I rode for Motor World Suzuki. Um, and uh, yeah, did two years there before returning home to win my first Australian Championship in 2005. Of course throughout your career you've had a lot of injuries. Tell us a little bit about that too. Yeah, injuries were probably a big part of it, but they sort of came after I got home from America. Um, but the biggest thing for me was actually, I signed with Suzuki in 2001, and uh, in Australia here, they had the Thumper Nationals Championship, and Suzuki didn't really have the right bike for the job, but uh, we made do with the bike that we had. Um, but basically, uh, the reason why I went with Suzuki was my association with Suzuki New Zealand and Suzuki Australia. It was just a good working relationship, so that sort of outweighed everything else, and that's why I went with Suzuki in the end. It's been a good relationship. What do you think has really kept you with Suzuki for you know, eight years, nine years? It wasn't about the money, it was about being comfortable and, and just being around the right people. And I'm glad that I stuck by Suzuki, and especially Suzuki New Zealand, because I actually now have the role when I manage the race team in New Zealand and I've sort of taken over that part and you know it's taken a little while for it to go out of house now but everything's run out of my workshop and out of my race truck and stuff and you know we've gone a long way and um, yeah just really excited to be doing that so I'm glad I've stuck by Suzuki because it's paid off now. How many years have you been you know, operating the Suzuki race team and where's the future going to hold with that? Um, last year was the first year that Suzuki actually released the team from in-house to, to me to manage the team. So not only was I contracted to race for the team, I was also contracted to manage the team. So and obviously last year was a 07 was a big year for me because I had to try and prove that I could run a race team and, and stuff like that. And and we won the motocross championship. Um, we won uh, the Australian, uh, the New Zealand Supercross championship in both classes. Um, so it was a successful year yeah. and um, we won a lot of races and um, yeah obviously that's led into this year and I have another year on my contract managing the team and stuff so um, everything's looking good there and I'm really enjoying doing that part of it too. Do you think that you'll still get out and have a ride with the boys and then show them what's what? Definitely, I'm still actually going to be racing in New Zealand, I'm not actually retiring completely from racing, I just couldn't commit to Suzuki Australia um, and give them the time that was required with yeah. the new Supercross season that was coming up and with the importance of, this, of the series and obviously the motocross championship. I just felt like I couldn't give them 100% the anymore because I had too many distractions and that kind of upsets me a little bit because I can't ride and get the results that I, I want but I've got so much happening I just it's not allowing it anymore so that's why I've decided you know this is the sign this is the, I'm going to take a step back and actually just start racing for fun again and not have to worry about racing to earn a living. Just before we leave mate I hope you're not going to be out there training too many youngsters up and getting them to come across Australia and do what you did to us. Um, yeah as I say it'll be um, it'll actually be good to have some Australians come out to New Zealand and race us on our yeah. soil that'll be good. Well mate look it's been fantastic speaking to you all the best with your future mate because I know that you've got a bright future ahead of you especially with Suzuki with those championship wins already. Ready, mate. Thanks again for joining Thanks, us, mate. mate. Well, he's given us plenty of highlights through his career in Australia, so let's go and have a look at some of them.
Yeah, some great memories there from a rider that's going to be sadly missed in Australia. Well, it's time for our bike review. And guess what? We're going to review a CRF 450R. Well, guys, this year's bike reviews are going to be a little bit different to what you've seen before. As always, we'll go through the bikes and show you all the brand new features of all the models. Now, each week, we're going to get the same two riders riding the bike and testing the bike. We're going to get their perspective on it and see what they think about it. And of course, the riders are going to be a pro rider and an intermediate rider. Our pro rider is Jamie Stewart. Now, technically, Jamie's an ex-pro rider, but he's been on a bike for well over 20 odd years and he's been a veteran of the Australian motocross and supercross circuit. And of course, our intermediate rider, surprise, surprise, is me. Now, you wouldn't think I'd be running my own show and miss out on riding the 09 bikes, would you? But our biggest change this year is our brand new bike tester. The Fro. The Fro's a pro level rider, weighing in at 73 kilos, and he's the master of the dirt. We've given the throw one instruction. Ride it like you stole it. That's right, we're gonna let him run loose for one whole lap and see what he comes up with. But before that, let's have a look at this week's test bike. In this week's MXTV bike review, we take a look at the brand new CRF 450R from Honda. Ever since the original CRF 450R rocked the world when it was released back in 2002, Honda's engineers have been refining the model, making it lighter, faster, and more importantly, easier to ride. The 2009 model is no exception, as design-wise, the next generation CRF is practically a brand new bike. Being no strangers to innovation, it's clear Honda wanted to build a bike that would continue to deliver class-leading power, yet would harness it within a chassis that's so lightweight it handles like a 250cc lights-class motocrosser. To do this, they focused on reducing the overall size of both the frame and engine, as well as relocating the engine forward towards the front wheel. Additionally, the engine itself has a heap of changes that make it more compact to boot. Given their long history of using sophisticated fuel injection systems on both their cars and street bikes, it's no surprise that one of the biggest new features is that the new CRF is now also fuel injected. Honda's program fuel injection or PGM FI system uses a single 12 hole fuel injector to shoot fuel from a slightly smaller fuel tank. The PGM FI system also utilizes throttle position, intake air temperature, pressure, coolant temperature, and gear position sensors to ensure optimum running conditions. Over the years, the CRF has taken the honors on more than one 450cc shootout. The 09 CRF 450R is an entirely new state-of-the-art motocross machine. And with the designers practically rebuilding the bike from the ground up, it looks like that's set to continue. The 2009 CRF 450R will be available in Australia from November 2008 and will retail for around $11,590. For the best bike insurance packages available, make sure you contact QBE Insurance, the motorbike insurance specialists. Okay, time to find out what our test riders had to say. Well, before we received the CRF 450R, I actually read a little bit about it on the websites at Full Noise and some of the guys that had ridden it, and uh, I was very excited to give it a ride. It's a completely new bike. Uh, let me tell you about the power of this bike. It's unbelievable, it really is, guys. First, second, third gear out of any corner, and you'll get out of it. The way that the fuel injection is on these bikes and the way that the power comes through, it's just instant. There's no lag, there's no, no, no bog down, there's nothing. It'll just pull you out of any corner, nearly in any gear. On today's track, it's a little bit of a hard packed track, so it was quite dry and slippery. I don't think this bike stepped out once for me. It was just so nice. Is there anything that I'd change on this bike? No. I don't think I would. Mate, the, the bike generally was absolutely like a lounge chair. Most comfortable thing I've actually ridden in a long time, just out of a box, just hop straight on it and go. Felt very, very comfortable. Nice and skinny, lots of room to move, fairly light, you can feel the bike underneath you, but it's very, very light and nimble to ride. I was absolutely pleasantly surprised. The, the power from the bottom to mid range was just phenomenal. It was really incredible. It's so snappy and it's so sharp. You, you can go around corners in the, you know, in the 
three gears too high, basically. It doesn't matter. Did drop off a little bit on the uh, top end, but uh, in a race situation, not a problem at all. In Supercross or with jumping and stuff like that, with, uh, with the low down and mid-range power was just really good. You can just do jumps so easily. You can just hop on it and jump. Suspension is very good, standard out of the box. You know, we had to adjust a few clickers here and there just to get the, uh, it right for my weight, etc. But um, very, very good. Absolutely awesome. Out of the box, hop on it and be very, very competitive. Now, as we said, every week we're going to let the fro do a hot lap. So it's time to let the fro go. For the first test, the froze laid down at 2 minutes 29. Not a bad time, but we'll see how long that stays on top of the table. OK, you've seen the hot lap by the fro, but I don't think he's given it nearly enough stick. So what we're going to do is the fro quarter mile, 200 metres. Yeah, I know, but the fro doesn't care about mass. He just cares about keeping it pinned for 200 metres. It's that simple. One, two seconds, not a bad benchmark and a good day's work first up from the fro. Well that's about it for MXTV here at Coolum. I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget, check out our website mxtv.com.au. There's plenty of fun stuff on there and heaps of video footage to watch. Well, until next week's show, I'll see you on the track. MXTV was proudly brought to you by Peter Stevens Motorcycles, QBE Insurance, Motorcycle Insurance Specialists, Fox, and Honda, the power of dreams.